Hello and welcome back to another video. We all know the Pokemon professors are some of the most important people in the Pokemon world. They are tasked with making sure every trainer is prepared to set out for their journey. Personally I love the professor characters and especially in the anime, which is why I wanted to rank every single Pokemon professor from the Pokemon anime. And I'll be including a few extras which have been anime exclusive professors such as Professor Ivy. Don't mention that name. So I hope you enjoy. There are a lot of professors that have appeared in the anime, so I'm not going to include all of them. I'm only going to include the ones that are famously known as important professors in the world and that have a bigger purpose in the anime. So characters such as Fennel from Black and White and various other professors that appear as characters of the day won't be included on this list. Number 13 is Professor Magnolia. Technically, Professor Magnolia has appeared in the anime. She appeared in Pokemon Journeys Episode 4, not in person, but there was a picture of her on Go's Rotom phone. For that reason alone, she makes it right at the bottom. Of course, I expect her to make some more appearances, and maybe she will get higher up on the list as the show goes on. She was also mentioned by Sonya in Episode 27. Number 12 is Professor Westwood V. Some of you may not remember this guy as he appeared all the way back in the original series, episode 66, The Evolution Solution. He isn't really that important, but I feel he played a big enough role and he was known as one of the programmers of the Pokedex back then. It was actually a really cool episode where he's trying to learn more about the Slowpoke's evolution. It's just a shame he never returned. Number 11 is Professor Ivy. Professor Ivy is probably the most well-known anime exclusive professor as she single-handedly broke Brock's heart. We still don't know what happened with them and I would love to find out one day. But she was a pretty cool character, she cared deeply for the Pokemon that lived on the Orange Islands and was a real expert in researching their unique qualities and how they differ to regular Pokemon. It was a massive shame we didn't see her much after the first episode she was in, other than a few brief cameos. She could have been higher on the list if she played more of a role in the Orange Islands arc. Number 10 is Professor Rowan. Diamond and Pearl is my favourite series, but unfortunately the Professor isn't one of my favourites. I like what they did with him, making him really different to all the other Professors. He was more blunt and rough around the edges than the others, who were all carefree and really friendly. This makes him unique, which is a good thing, but I just prefer a lot more of the other Professors over him. He had some really solid episodes, having his own Pokemon Summer School arc, and then he helped out to defeat Team Galactic as well. So, although he might have done more than some of the professors higher than him, I just personally wasn't a massive fan. Coming in number 9 is Professor Juniper, our first main female professor, and she was one of the positives of the Black and White series. I really enjoyed her character, she always popped up in random episodes researching different unique topics, such as the Charged Stone Cave, and also the very awesome evolution that Shelmet and Carablast undertake. She seems a lot more hands on with her involvement of the series, she obviously helped Ash rotate his Pokemon as he caught more than 6 in the series and it seemed like we saw her more than some of the other professors. We even saw her dad appear and it was a nice way of giving her even more character development. Number 8 is Professor Elm. I do like Professor Elm but at the same time there are some big disappointments I have with his character. He really barely appeared in the Johto series. For a series with so much filler, you would have thought he could have shown up way more than he did to cut down some of that filler and give him some character development. So why is he so high? Well, I just enjoy his personality, he's a student of Professor Oak, and he can never stop talking about a subject that he's passionate about. When him and Professor Oak get going on the phone, the call lasts for hours. Much like the rest of Johto, Master Quest kinda saved him from being forgotten. He returned in the Larvitar arc to give Ash the Larvitar egg, and the task of bringing it back to its family, and then he appeared in the Johto League to help out Jimmy just before his battle with Ash. Overall he was just a fun character who had a really good heart and he was passionate about what he does. We also saw him in Pokemon Journeys episode 21 on screen showing his connection with Pokemon X. I really hope he makes a comeback in person in the series. Coming in number 7 is Sonya. So I apologise for having Sonya so high as she's only appeared in one episode of the Pokemon anime so far, but I'm sure you guys won't mind as everyone loves Sonya. She's probably this high because of the games and how good of a character she is, and I believe that her story from the games will carry over to the anime. We've already seen her discuss the darkest day in front of the hero statue, 
with Ash and Go, so I'm really looking forward to where the series is going to take her. Number 6 is Professor Cerise, the latest professor to be added in the anime. And I'm actually really surprised he's this high up, but I've got to say, I'm enjoying everything about his character so far. He runs the lab perfectly, giving Ash and Go some really great tasks to go on, and he helps them develop and grow as trainers by helping them see the world, when they're not stuck in Kanto that is. And who wouldn't love a guy who pops up out of nowhere and hands you tickets to a world championship match between Lance and Leon? That's like someone handing me a Champions League final ticket. He's a family guy as well. We've had a lot of growth with him, Chloe and his wife. They all seem to look up to him so much and respect him. And he even wrote a book which inspires his family and explains all about how to live in the Pokemon world. If there was any professor that I'd want to be like, it would probably be this guy. Number 5 is Professor Burnett. It took me a while to get into the Sun and Moon series and really understand what it was about and how different it was to all the series that came before it. And at the front of this great series was Professor Burnett and Professor Kukui. Their relationship was one of the best aspects of the show. They were literally an alone family with Ash being their adoptive child. She was such a nice and supportive character helping out Ash and her husband whenever they needed it. And she was a great professor and researcher too. One of my favourite episodes in Sun and Moon is the wedding episode. It was such a nice proposal on the beach, and it was something new for Pokemon. We've never seen an actual relationship like this develop and grow through the course of a series. And the fact that we got a wedding was incredible. I loved her character and the way that she affected other characters around her, and that's what made her even better. Coming in number 4 is Professor Sycamore. This guy is one of the coolest professors in Pokemon. He had a really big impact on the X and Y series as a whole, mainly with the Climax and the Team Flare arc, and of course his former assistant was Alan, and they didn't part ways on the best of terms. He holds such a presence in the X and Y series, he seems to pop up a lot in crucial situations to help out, and he's also the anime's way of explaining Mega Evolutions to us. He even owns his own Mega Garchomp. He's just a really cool, calm and collective guy, and he always steals the episodes that he's in. I think he's an excellent character. Third place is Professor Birch. Some of you might be surprised that Birch is all the way in third place, but you may not if you know how much I love Hoenn, so there might be some slight bias towards him. I think he's such a well written character, he has a true purpose in the games and in the anime. He's all about field work, getting up close and personal with Pokemon, not just sitting behind a desk at a lab. He loves getting his hands dirty and researching Pokemon the proper way. Honestly, some of my favourite advanced episodes are when the gang randomly bump into Birch and go on a wacky research adventure with him. One that comes to mind is when they're on Duford Island and they just find him climbing up the side of a cliff just to get a peek at a Wingle's nest. My very first peek inside a Wingle's nest! <laughs> he does all these things just so he can find out more about Pokemon and it always makes for a great episode when he tags along. Coming in second place is Professor Kukui. So the two left were probably the real obvious choices. It was super hard picking which one goes first and which one goes second. So if you think this is wrong, then please know that these two characters are interchangeable and it's a very close gap. Kakui is the closest thing to a dad that Ash has ever had. Living with him for his entire Alola journey and having him watch over Ash and nurture and develop him into becoming the champion of Alola. Even being his teacher at the Pokemon school. He was everything to our main characters this series, but he was so much more. He was the Mask Royal, we was waiting for so long for the gang to find out his true identity, and it was such a great moment when it happened. And then the final battle. What more can be said about it? It's one of the greatest battles in Pokemon anime history, if not the best. And it's all thanks to Ash and Kakui's bond that they shared. I won't say more, much more about him because we all know he's such a great written character and he deserves all the praise that he gets. We finally made it to the first spot and it is Professor Oak, the first ever professor that we were introduced to in both the games and the anime. Ash woke up late to receive his Pokemon and Professor Oak uttered the famous lines, you look like you're ready for bed, not Pokemon training, and that started everything off. Professor Oak has been a mentor to Ash from day one. Kukui did a fantastic job in the Alola region, but Oak has been there from the start, having the highest amount of appearances out of any professor keeping all of Ash's Pokemon at his lab for him, and really teaching Ash all about Pokemon. Not just battling, but looking after Pokemon, working with Pokemon as one, and becoming a better trainer. Kakui might have been Ash's alone father, but Oak is probably the closest Ash got to an actual father. 
Mysteriously, he's always around Delia, so... But Oak will always be iconic, not just because he's the first, but because he's remained there every single region to help Ash grow, and give him advice when needed. Some regions we don't see him as much like X and Y, but we know he's always going to return, and that's why Professor Oak is my favourite of all the professors in the anime. Helping others, sharing their burdens, that's the way to become a better trainer, a better friend, and a better person. So that is my ranking, please let me know who your favourite professor is. This video was honestly one of my favourites to make, so I'd appreciate any support and I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe and I'll see you next time.